Hello, this video is all about how you can improve the cheap Asian uh, knockoffs of the South or jackknife pick. Uh, they're all basically the same thing under various different names. Some are matte finish, some are more glossy. You know, at the end of the day, they're all basically cheap knockoffs of this uh, South or uh, jackknife uh, kit. Uh, they have uh, poor tolerances. Uh, the body on, on the pick over here is just made out of some pot metal. And this is a magnet. It does not stick. So when you're using the lock nut to hold it down, it's not going to be quite as good as the... Uh, it'll never be quite as good as the Southward, but you can get it pretty damn close by doing the refinements that I go over in this video. I've put quite a little of uh, elbow grease, and it went from pretty pretty bad to something very very usable uh, day to day and all you need is uh, some nail files a hammer and a bit of elbow, elbow grease and, and good a good set of eyes so these are the files that I use to help uh, with the process uh, so get, get starting with the first issues with these uh, cheaper generic picks is that the pick is it's very loose. Uh, your your individual picks, when you put it out, it does not stay locked down well at all. Um, if you're lucky, you might get a couple of seconds of use before it starts wiggling, wiggling around. If it starts doing that, you're getting no feedback. It just becomes much more difficult to have any feeling or feedback in the picking. And for some techniques, you might have trouble doing them all together. Um, and also, the 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 picks will catch themselves when you move, move them in and out and you want them to be you don't want your picks getting in the way of each other especially when retracting them to put back in the body because the key to being able to lock down your pick um, also relies on laying down all the picks you're not using flat within the body if they're not all snug and flat within the body your main pick is not going to lock down as well. That even applies to the uh, the southward set. So you need them to all lie down flush easily. Uh, so the starting point, if you do if you do nothing else, the one thing that you'll want to do, if nothing else, is address the nut. Uh, the nut as it comes out of the box is is the tip is very rough and uneven. In order for the lockdown to work. Uh, properly and better it needs to be flat and smooth so you want to take a file that is sufficient in strength to grind that down and you want to file that down nice and smooth so that way you'll have a better lockdown and then from that point it's a matter of making sure that you have <coughs> you keep the picks nice and flat in the body when you extend this and make this thing as tight as you can and um, so the other things I did to improve the body is I filed down the entire body of the of the pick. I, I filed down all the picks, making them smoother and better. I bent them all into shape so they don't get in the way of each other when moving in and out of the lock pick body. And I used a hammer to tighten down the opening all around here so that way this doesn't jiggle so freely like it did out of the box. Out of the box, this had a lot of play. So now it's substantially better. See, it's really good now. And, what, and uh, I put some paper towels to prevent my hammer from producing the pick body and I'm moving this in various positions depending on where I needed to hammer it I hammered it all along side here here and, and over here to bring the body in a little bit tighter so that way it had an, a better overall fit hammered it in, in, the, in the center, hammered it towards the top and here flipped it around, did it the same way both sides a bit tightening this up so that way these are smoother 
And as far as um, these, so as you see now, since my work, none of these catch each other. You, when, when I have them like, like fanned out like this, for example, I can just go like that and they're perfectly flush side by side. None of them are binding or folded in the way in front of another pick. I can take any random pick, move the rest down flat in the body perfectly. You can never do that out of the box. It wouldn't lay flat. You'd have, they'd be all over the place. You'd spend the next five minutes trying to adjust it. <clears throat> and, I, and, I, and also I can just lay down the, the pick that's out there and it goes right in flush without it binding against any of the picks. So what you do, again, is you basically bend them out of the way. You do what you need to do. You, you take a look at, the, at, at, the, um, at your picks and you see which way they're going towards. If, if any are skewed towards the left or to the right or if they have a bias bent one way or another, either, either I will take the pick and I'll bend it from the tip or it'll go from the back over here or if it looks like it's more towards the end I'll just start from this part of the pick and I'll and I'll bend that way slightly I'll, I just do enough that it moves it out of the way and it's smooth and I keep going little by little not overdoing it until it's where it needs to be and if you can see how they look They're all out of each other's way. Now, if you want to make the usability of the picks also a lot better and the action smoother when you're just moving it in and out, or you want to have a, a couple of grades of file. So I mainly use this file for it. It's slightly, maybe medium grade, and this is like a super fine grade. I'll start with this. I'll just do a few swipes up and down around the edges. When you, um, and then I finish with a fine file going as needed. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to get to the point where it feels smooth. I'll start from, uh, and I did it from both positions here as well as over here. And I, and I also emphasized wanting to get this area smooth, the base. So I, I worked this area to get these edges smooth so that way when all the picks are moving, it, it's when they rub against each other, it doesn't feel like it's grinding. It has more of a grinding feeling. If you don't do that, once you tighten this up, then it, you'll want to make sure these are nice and smooth. So, smoothed off the bases here. Things like the CD rake, especially, you want to make, the, make sure the edges are nice and smooth. Again, you, when you're filing, you're, you're going like. Let me use the non-file part, yeah. I'd be going like this. Or like that. Or on the side. The back. Slightly, just quickly going around just to round off the edges a bit. To make it smoother and slick within the lock. You repeat that with all, especially picks that you're using a zipping technique on. Such as... Uh, you know, like your S-Rake. Uh, you want to make sure that's really smooth. You know, all the, the tip, the edges, or when you pull it to push it in, when you whip it out really quick, you want those edges to be really smooth so it, it just has a better action and it comes in and out of the lock smoother or it will be less damaging to the pins in your lock when it's nice and smooth. And, and you keep working uh, your filing until you get it where you want to. Uh, trying not to overdo it or take away more metal than you really need to. So as you see, and, and then once I did everything, I just gave it a little wash with some soap, and then I used some a little three-in-one oil, dabbed it and rubbed it over the entire the entire pick, and then wiping it off so it's not uh, very thick anymore. So it's mostly cleaned off with a tiny bit of oil still where it needs to be. 
and um, you saw how easy that was to put them down. They, they're all laying flat. I also filed off the tensioner. I smoothed that down, I polished it. I also uh, narrowed the end here because it was it's normally the same thickness as the entire body so I narrowed the tip a bit so if I put it in a lock and I don't want to use the full width of the lock let's say I might use the narrower tip to maybe put it towards the bottom in a different position to gain different access to the lock in fact I might want to make this even a little bit narrower still but you basically want to make the like towards the, the halfway down make it like a ramp and that'll be fine and let me show you how the lockdown is now so again before it wouldn't it would barely lock down to save your life even if you did get it locked down a bit it would it would come loose pretty quickly and got my things all perfect perfectly flat I have my nice flat ground screw Also, I also put a little bit of oil around the hole there. Get it really tight. And now there you go. This holds way, way better than it did. I mean, it's a night and day difference. It's not perfect. It's not um, as perfect as it possibly could be if it had the body was made out of better materials, but um, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty darn good, and it's very usable now. Especially making sure that these are all flat, and this is nice and snug. Emphasizing that this nut again needs to be filed smooth. You know that top of that nut. <clears throat> now, with all that said, let me uh, show you three different uh, picking techniques for this. Uh, like I did in my prior, prior video uh, that I did with the Southward uh, pick. I will be doing the same thing with the CD rake. I'll, I'll be showing you rocking, raking, and single pin picking. And it's going to basically go the same way as it did with the Southward. So uh, here we go next. So for this picking demonstration, I'm going to start with the uh, CD rake and the rocking technique and you'll also see three distinct tensioning methods from rocking to raking and a uh, single pin picking and also now that this locks down a lot better than it did out of the box I can actually do a proper rocking technique where it's not something you could easily do beforehand because it just wouldn't hold down well and um, when I've been really lucky I've actually open this within a couple seconds but I'm usually not always that lucky so we'll see how it goes on this run but um, on the tensioning technique um, you're gonna this first I gotta overcome a little bit of the spring tension but I'm gonna be pulsating it like that so it's just gonna be quite a bit different than an, an SP ping or a zipping technique so uh and I'm going to be holding the body of the pick and going like, like that, so wiggle. And I'll be rocking it up and down within the keyway. There we go, and that's your rocking technique. All right, now I'm going to be using the S rake to zip into this lock. Uh, basic procedure: you're going to put your pick towards the back, towards the last pin, and depending on the profile of your S rake, you'll be going straight out or you'll be leaning back a little bit as you're pulling and then you'll turn the core after you pull out so uh, here goes nothing and if you're lucky you can get it within a couple swipes 
but we'll see how this goes. And there we go. That is your raking technique. And then, yeah. and now I'm going to single pin pick this lock open. And you'll see the tensioning technique again is different than the other techniques. In this case, I'm going to be overcoming the spring tension on the core to the point where it stops moving. And I'm not pushing it hard, it's like I'm just putting just enough pressure where it stops. And this is a five pinner, it's got security pins including spools and uh, every now and then you'll see something called um, where I pull it back, that's because it's counter rotation from hitting a spool to set it. So let's get this open. Let's see. I'm feeling four pins that bind. The ones that are springy I skip over because they're either not set yet or not ready to be set. And there we have it. That's single pin picking. And, um, so, in conclusion, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, review and overview of the cheaper Asian knockoffs of the South Ward and some of my improvements to this one. Again, it's not perfect, but it is a lot better, much, much better overall than it was out of the box from the get-go. Well, again, while the lockdown isn't perfect on this, it does lock down a lot tighter and more reliably than it was. It's quicker to get locked down because I don't have to futz around forever with the picks because I got them all adjusted well where they're not in their way I can quickly drop them down into the slot where which is essential to getting the best tightness on, on it if you do replace it with uh, one of the nuts from like a southward for example you can buy the nuts separately from southward if you wanted to uh, it does lock down a little bit tighter than you can with this because I think mainly because of the knurling on the end of the nut it's better. It's, you get more grip on it. You can get a little, a little bit tighter by hand. Otherwise, you can use a small plier if you are in a situation where you're really not getting it as tight as you want it to get. Like I, I'll use my um, my Leatherman uh, PS2, for example. But um, yeah, it's it's doing way better overall. A lot happier with the fit and finish and feel. And uh, yeah, it's certainly a lot significantly less frustrating to work with with the tweaks but again uh, all day long i would go with the original but if you can't afford the uh the extra money for it then get one of these get a couple of good files and uh get to work on it 
So I hope you enjoy this uh, video. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I also may be reviewing a couple of other uh, jackknife picks I have uh, as well.